Good morning, everybody. Actually, good afternoon. I just finished eating lunch. I spent the morning writing and recording a voiceover for a project video I have coming up. I'm finally getting the video of the epoxy poured vanity that I made more than a month ago now. I'm finally getting that video done. Oh, boy, I need to replace my calendar. That is an old one. Uh, so morning was spent on the computer and I'm tired of sitting, so today I'm coming out to the shop and I'm gonna do some laser work. I uh, had a guy at the gun show of all places come by and say he wanted 40 of these made up real quick and that's something I can actually do. So I'm gonna throw that project into the laser and while that's running and I'm feeding more material into that thing, I'm gonna work on a dumbbell rack for my wife. We recently painted, cleaned, then painted, and kind of finished the space in the basement where I had a bow flex and a simple weight thing. And, uh, then I got my hands on a whole bunch of horse stall mats, big thick rubber mats. They are now down in the basement. It's really kind of a nice gym now. So my wife moved some of her simple exercise equipment down there. And all of her dumbbells are on the floor. She wants a, a little bit of a rack for that. So I figure while the laser's running, let's start putting one of those together. I figure rather than just talking about it, why don't I show you the gym space we have going on down here. So this is what it looks like now. A little folding table. I'll probably do something better there. That TV's got to get hung up on the wall. But here's what it looks like now. We've got these thick rubber horse stall mats. If it's good enough for a horse, it's got to be good enough for me, right? Makes the whole place, I don't know, a little bit cozier. Actually, a little bit quieter. Uh, Katie threw up some mirrors, I guess. That's for checking yourself out while you're looking awesome. Uh, squat rack and bars and stuff. I'm a weakling. Don't judge the amount of weights on things. My shoulder's a mess. But this is what I'm getting at. This is her neatly organized spaniel. Wait, not spaniel. Flint, you're in my shot. Oh yeah, get more in the shot, perfect. So, uh, yeah, he's fun to have around. Good dog. That's the little weights. And they're just sort of spread out on the floor. And she'd like to have them up off the ground away from the dogs and kids and bugs. So we're gonna make some kind of a quickie rack for that. And Flint, why was the back of your head all wet? That was a little gross. Anyway, let's go work on this while the laser runs. So we'll set the laser up first and then work on this, yay. I'm gonna take this one to, you know, get some sizes off of. Yes, you, wet head. Why do you have a wet head? I don't know, but he looks pretty excited about it, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep, nope, you're pretty handsome. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, huh? Well, you want this. Well, that's not yours. You are a handsome critter. All right, let's go. So we have that going. I'm gonna let that run a while. I think I can speed the settings up a fair bit and make it happen faster. Right now it's gonna take uh, more than a few minutes to get this much done. But we'll start looking at that weight rack. I think I decided we'll make it two, two uh, shelves and they need to be about 25 inches long a piece. I have a lot of scrap around right now. I think we're gonna try to use some of that. A lot of it is from uh, these loader boards that I made. I mentioned this in the last video real quick and people were curious what they were. Uh, I'm missing some parts right now, so it's kind of hard to demonstrate it, but the way it works is you dump ammunition in here. In this case, it's for uh, 223 or 556 or 300 blackout in AR-15 style magazines. You dump the ammo in here, you hold the magazine over here, and then you you line the ammo in, in here, bullets up, primers down, and then these are round counts and they're pretty accurate. 
And when you have the a number of rounds that you want in there, you grab, uh, here's the top half of it. The bottom half has a little tooth that sticks out. You put that on there and shove it in and it puts all the rounds into the magazine in about a half a second. Um, I would really demonstrate this, except for YouTube is really funny about gun stuff. So I'm just gonna keep that off this channel. My outdoor, my hunting, shooting channel is gonna have more of that kind of thing on it. So maybe I'll go demonstrate this on there, but anyway. There's a lot of scrap from this project. And here's some of it. Some cool spalted maple, some walnuts, some all sorts of stuff. We're gonna try to utilize that as long as I have enough long enough pieces. Have enough long enough? Talk much? Anyway. Okay, so I got on a roll on this and uh, stopped filming for a little while. So we have little cleats on the side that are angled and we have uh, our first cross piece holding the legs up. There's a round over on this edge, which is important. And then these pieces will go in next. They have that little bitty lip on there. So this piece ends up going up here, nice and flush like, and that'll get tacked down in the corners and then it'll be pretty strong. But that's how that shelf will look. And if I grab these here weights, this should work about right. Little two pounders get set there and they are balanced on both sides. 12 pounders get set there and they are balanced on both sides. And when you wanna grab it, you can just reach right through and grab it. And you don't, you don't run into a flat shelf. If this was flat and you reach down to grab it, you smash your fingers on the bottom. So now there's that pass through that makes that a little nicer. And by the time I get this and this and this, that rocking might go away. And if it doesn't, I'll put a cross piece across the back and that'll really stiffen the whole thing up. But I think, I think this is, they're not heavy, heavy weights. Uh, so I don't think that this maple is gonna sag too bad. I don't think we're gonna have any trouble with that, but I'm gonna finish assembling it here. All right, back down in the basement. This still is gonna need some finish on it and maybe a little bit more sanding, but I wanted to load it up and make sure it was gonna do exactly what I needed it to. I put this cross piece in the back to add some strength, keep the, the heavier weights will go on top and that'll keep it from sagging. And then if it does seem like this is a little bit tippy, I can run a screw through that and screw it straight into the wall and I can do it anywhere. I don't need to hit a stud, it's just OSB. Um, but I needed to load it up and find out if it's gonna do what I want it to. These guys need to move. Shouldn't have grunted so bad. That's a little embarrassing. There, so throw it against the wall. 12. 12. 10. 10. What's next? Eight. Eight. Couple of fives. Couple of threes. And couple, couple of cute little twos. That is gonna work just fine, I think. And it doesn't really rack side to side very bad. And it doesn't really wanna tip. I mean, if I pull it over, I can make it come over. So I think that means I am gonna end up screwing it to the wall, but I think first we'll uh, let Katie check it out and make sure it is what she wants it to be. And uh, then we'll finish it up. Not too bad for an afternoon project and a bunch of scrap maple that was gonna go into the fire. Birds. How we doing today? Rock, rock. Oh, we're off to a good start. Well, I mean, any egg's a start, I guess. Out of water. Time for some food. All right. And how are the inmates? Hanging out in solitary confinement. These are uh, newly acquired birds. 
friend of mine moved and couldn't keep chickens anymore, so I took them in. And they like different food than mine does. How special is that? I have to keep two different kinds of foods. That's not really fair. My buddy brought over the food that they were using. And when I run out of that, those will switch to the food I have. So, that is pelletized chicken food. That's the scratch. There, this is the granular. This bird right here, hey, Tyson. This bird right here is Tyson. If you get a close look at her, you're ready to get this, Tyson. Bark, bark. Do you see that horrible beak? She's been that way since the day we got her and she's four years old now. We figured she wouldn't survive long not being able to eat. But she just kind of mushes her head into the pile of food and somehow enough gets in there that she keeps living. She is everybody's favorite. The rest of them I could eat today and not feel bad about. Tyson I'd be pretty sad about. But that's why we went with granular stuff because she could not get those pellets in her head. But this is a little easier for her. But our favorite thing is this scratch. Yes, 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 I'm getting it for you. Let's see, little cup. This is just crushed corn and whole corn and all sorts of other stuff that birds apparently like because she goes nuts. And I put it in that dish for her because she can't really get it up off the ground. Um, I throw another bucket outside for all these other birds with regular beaks because they can just go and pick it up off the ground and I make them work for it a little bit. But that's for special, special Tyson, named after the frozen chicken food. Anyway, that's enough for chickens for the morning. Ah, crap, we gotta get water. All right, that is a heater because it freezes in here and that's underneath all of the chicken turds, runs up and gets plugged in and that's a timer to keep the UV lamp going so they keep throwing eggs all year. All right, I'll be right back with your water. Back, back. Can't forget the extra scratch. You wanna know a really weird story? It makes no sense to me, and I've done it three times now. I go in there, and then I slam this door shut so they don't get out behind me. And somehow, this hook flips itself up and catches that with me inside. Yeah, I've locked myself in a chicken coop three times now. Ugh. So I've always kind of wanted a drone, but I've never been able to justify a need for one. Uh, but maybe this whole vlog thing is gonna be the justification. Uh, and to test that, my brother actually bought a drone. He has lots of disposable income, so he bought one just as a toy and he let me borrow it. So I'm gonna try to fly this thing today and just get a hang of it and see if it makes any sense for me to have something like this. There's an order of operations to this one too, all right. Top wing, bottom wing. This is a pretty cheap one, but it still has a camera and I can use my phone to get footage on it. And we're gonna set this thing up and see if it makes sense for this channel to maybe go, to go airborne. took off from the table there and it landed right back about three feet from where it took off from. So it's returned to home, got off by a little bit, but it did land safely. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't make it go to certain places. I don't know if the electrical in the power line was screwing with it. I don't know if there's sensors in it. If I read the instructions, I could be closer, but uh, time for more practice.
All right, so we're back at it. There is the blind. You can see it is too tall for the door. So we're gonna have to tip it over inside the barn and then roll it out. I put wheels on one side and then we're gonna lift it with really long forks and set it on a trailer and then haul it down to the farm and set it up, which is just kind of the opposite of the whole operation. But let's get back to testing the drone. All right, uh, camera, lens angle, look down. Hey, now it can see me. Let's just do a flyby. Let's see. Let's just do a flyby of, that's the shop right there. There's the tree fort. That video is still in the works. And there is eternal nothingness of corn. Actually, this year they'll probably plant beans. Okay. Let's do another flyby. High speed. Stop turning. There is... Whoa. Nope, nope, nope. Other way. Other way. That is in a tree. Holy smokes. I can't believe I didn't hit a branch. All right, the wind is more up there. Let's, uh, we're gonna send her home because I'm getting tired of this. Slide right for landing. Oh, good, it didn't go back to where I wanted it to. Man, I really almost destroyed that thing, but it's trying to come back. Come on, just don't crash my brother's drone into the tree, please. Yeah, come on. You can land. No branches. That's a lot of branches. Oh, come on now. Well, we were within about four feet of that tree a lot of the time on this flight. But we're safe and sound now. Well, I don't think that's going to work for what I want to do tomorrow. Uh, considering we're going to put the blind under the canopy of a bunch of old oak trees and it, it's going to be in the woods not near the woods and so i would be flying that thing underneath a bunch of branches and considering i had pretty much wide open spaces with one tree to avoid and i couldn't keep it away from that tree i don't think that 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 drone is going to do the job for that i'll probably bring it with i'll probably crash it know my brother a new drone but uh i don't think it's going to go well Anyway, I have a few things to button up on the blind here. Uh, I have some old rugs that are gonna go inside it because that will kind of help keep it warm and cut down on the noise, the boot noise, the shuffling around of kids who are impatient uh, or dads who are impatient. Uh, so I've gotta get some rugs in there, cut them and make them fit. Uh, I've gotta put two corner pieces on the front corners here because this seam isn't watertight like the back one is where I folded it over. And then I'm gonna go around with a bunch of silicone and just fill in a bunch of holes that don't have screws in them uh, and, and kind of clean up. This back window needs to get sealed up again a little bit better. Here's the wheels I put on. This is gonna make the whole thing act just like a giant wheelbarrow. We're gonna tip it over on this side, pick it up with the tractor and roll it out. And then we'll have really long forks on the tractor that should be able to just pick the whole thing up. It looks big, it looks heavy but it should only be about half the weight that my little tractor is capable of lifting. So it should just get picked up and thrown on the trailer pretty easy. But uh, anyway, I need to get to work on that so this can happen tomorrow and I'm gonna make that be part of the next video. So thanks for watching guys and make sure you do the whole like and subscribe stuff. I really hate saying that out loud, but there it is. And check back next time to see this thing get put in place.